Okay, American federal government, we are on the chapter on the presidency. Last week, I, I forgot to post a video on the legislative branch to introduce that. But um, uh, so anyways, uh, uh, hopefully you didn't miss that too much. But uh, I want to introduce the chapter on the presidency, some things to think about. First of all, the presidency has expanded greatly in the 20th century and 21st centuries. If you get a chance, go to whitehouse.gov and then click on the cabinet and you'll see all the executive departments. It started with four, Secretary of State, Secretary of War, Secretary of Treasury, and the Attorney General, the Chief Law Enforcement Officer. Today, I think there's like at least 20 cabinet positions. Everything from the Department of Interior that oversees land policy to the Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Labor and, and the Department of Agriculture. <clears throat> These are all cabinet positions that serve the president that oversee a huge bureaucracy. Uh, and the bureaucracy has grown out of necessity, really, because uh, since the Industrial Revolution, government has had a much greater role in people's lives, whether it is ensuring health and food safety, the Health and Human Services and the Food and Drug Administration, or the Centers for Disease Control, uh, issues like COVID, or agriculture and agriculture production and um, uh, food, oh, well, that also does with, with uh, meat inspection. Um, uh, health and Human Services, I mentioned that, uh, the Department of Interior. Uh, okay, so you had the, um, the barge that took that bridge down. Department of Transportation uh, is in charge of that to ensure safety and transportation in the airlines. I mean, it's just all encompassing. There's so much. Homeland Security to help prevent terrorist attacks, both foreign and domestic. Obviously, those are important roles for government. And Congress cannot make little laws for everything that has to be done. There's too much to be done, and so we have to have an executive branch that can carry these functions out. Uh, what happens, though, is you have a bureaucracy that often is making rules that's kind of like laws. Um, and so you've seen the growth of the presidency in power, and the presidency has become more powerful uh, and, and continues to. Um, Excuse me, and so that's something to be aware of. Because the chief job of the president's a couple of things. First of all, with regard to foreign relations, we cannot have uh, the 535 members of Congress, Congress and the Senate, negotiating with foreign countries. And that would be ridiculous. So we have one voice and that's the president. So the president's job is with regard to foreign policy, uh, controlling the diplomats, uh, ambassadors, picking those ambassadors, negotiating treaties, working with the United Nations, working with NATO, especially is extremely important in light of Ukraine and allies like in Israel and dealing with situations like that. That's one of the chief functions of the of the executive branch and of the of the presidency, and one of the chief jobs of the presidency. But um, the uh, the other thing too is, of course, enforcing the law. Don't forget, Article One is the legislative branch. Uh, they are Article One because they're really the most important because they are the ones that make the law, and they put a check on the power of the presidency, and in some ways, vice versa. That's checks and balances. In the next chapter, we'll get to the judicial branch. So Congress makes the law, and then the president's job is to enforce that law. But uh, as I mentioned, there are so many rules and so many things that have to be carried out. Oftentimes the executive branch can find itself kind of making laws and then there's this struggle. So that's your question for this week on the discussion. Is the difference between an executive order and a law? Uh, and just a, a hint on that, you know, a president can issue an executive order and uh, that is a means of, of carrying out a law. Um, the best example of this to help you along was uh, Congress has already passed laws with regards to immigration, but they haven't acted on it in a long time, so we have 12 million people here illegally. Um, it is not practical unless we turn into a totalitarian Gestapo state to deport 
12 million people. Uh, and so the president must use discretion in how to enforce that law. And under Obama, uh, he had issued something called DACA, Deferred Action on Childhood Arrivals. It was an executive order. And he said, I'm not gonna deport people who were brought here as a child, they're called the dreamers, because uh, it's not their fault they're here and they've never lived in their home country. This is the only home they've ever known. And so they can stay here illegally. Now, people opposed to that were very upset because they said, hey, you can't do that. You have to enforce the law. And he says, yeah, I know I have to enforce the law, but how I enforce it is up to me. I can't deport 12 million, so I'm not going to deport them. I will deport others, like people who commit crimes and stuff. The problem with that executive order, though, is executive orders are not laws. So they can just be undone by the next president. So when Trump became president, he revoked DACA. And he said, no, I'm going to deport them. And of course, for people who were part of DACA, they came out of the shadows. And they said, hey, oh, okay, I can be here illegally. And so they revealed themselves. So now you actually have a list of these people and it would be easier to deport them. So they went to court, to the third branch of government and say, they can't do this. But before the court could settle it, Biden became president and he said through executive order, no DACA, they can stay. <laughs> and that's the problem is it makes your head spin because it's not a law, it's an executive order and it's debatable. Another executive order was Trump uh, wanted a border wall. And Congress, uh, controlled by Democrats at the time, was very much against it. And so they refused to provide funding because Congress controls the money. Congress controls the money. They spend the money. It's in the Constitution. I said, no, we're not giving you money for your border wall. And Trump said, fine, I'm going to issue an executive order. I'm going to take money from the defense budget because he argued the wall is necessary for the defense of our country. And that meant taking money from Tinker Air Force Base, taking money from other things, and then reallocating it. And he said, but I can do that as president because I have discretion on how to enforce those laws and, and what I want to spend the money on. And Congress and those opposed were like, you can't do that. That's a law. And he said, no, it's an executive order. It goes to the Supreme Court because that's the third branch of government. And the court says, no, actually, he, he can do that. But the problem with the executive orders, Biden becomes president. He says, no, we're not, we're not going to build that wall. And then he cuts that funding. So again, it's enough to make your head spin. The same thing with uh, treaties uh, and executive agreements. Treaties is binding. The Senate approves it. Uh, executive agreements is when a president just negotiates an agreement, usually because the Senate isn't going to approve it. And so they just negotiate that agreement, but it can go back and forth. So you've seen a, a much greater power of the presidency. Part of this is understandable and necessary, but part of it sometimes can seem like a threat to our representative government, regardless of who's in office. So those are some of the things to think about as you read the chapter. And um, as always, email me with questions. Uh, 10 minutes is never enough to sum up all that, uh, that the chapter entails. So. But uh, um, best of luck with this assignment. We're getting really close to the end, so uh, almost there.